everyone, this is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for November 8th, 2020, Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern. You are the supreme reality. All there is. Just trust and remember that. Wisdom lies in never forgetting the self. The supreme absolute as the ever-present source of both the experiencer and the experience. I am beyond consciousness, and so in consciousness, I cannot say what I am, yet I am. Let go of the idea that you are not aware of yourself as the ever-present, changeless, inexpressible reality. Just let go. When you want nothing, seek nothing, expect nothing, then the Supreme State will come to you uninvited and unexpected. Stop making use of your mind and see what happens. Do this one thing thoroughly. That is all. Sri Nezergadatta Mirage. We as Supreme Reality, all of us, we seem to be individual, but we're one. <clears throat> we are everything to some that is a difficult understanding but eventually the civilization will come full circle to understand and embrace it the essential goal of this life for all of us is to be happy the happiness is within, the center of our core being, but yet we look for it everywhere else but in. When we are aligned with this, life aligns with us. Magical things are created into reality. And when we are deeply happy, inside with who we are, exactly the way we are, and the way our life is. When we are not attached to thinking that creating into reality our desires is then going to make us happy, then we are free. The manifesting master inside of us knows, of course, that we may become momentarily happy when a desire is created in reality or manifest. Yet this happiness is minuscule compared to the deeply loving sensation of being connected to the infinite source within. Whenever we are attached to, certain, to a certain outcome, uh, to bring happiness, uh, to, to bring us happiness. We are coming from a fearful, needy place. So when you're attached to a certain outcome to bring you happiness, you're coming from a fearful, needy place and ultimately feeling disconnected to your source. Feeling disconnected, you're not literally disconnected. When you are simply relaxed within yourself, at home and in your being, able to rest in your heart, you naturally feel connected with your source. This spiritual connection is already the foundation of your being and finding mastery within it is simply realizing what you already always are. So this divine connection
action really boils down to a moment-to-moment choice in this life. You are always choosing in each moment if you are or aren't connected. You are always choosing if you're coming from trust or from fear. Your entire reality is defined in this now moment. You can choose to be happy, feel deeply at peace, empowered and grateful for your life just as it is. You are the eternal choice maker of how you interpret the feelings arising in you and the thousands of thoughts passing through you. Attachment is the most powerful way to stop your desires from being created in reality or manifesting. Attachment is happening every single time your body feels tense, tight, stressed, confused, upset, or grumpy. Every time you are not experiencing great joy, you are attached to something. It will feel like you are swimming against the river, upstream fighting the current, and trying to force something to happen by pure will alone. And what's the payoff you're getting for remaining attached to these desires, dreams, or beliefs? You find out what it takes to let go and trust in the divine process of life. Downstream thinking. When you feel anything that is not connected to ease and joy, just ask yourself this simple question. What am I attached to? Because your freedom and enlightenment is as simple as that. So when you feel stressed, irritable, pressured, confused, and you ask yourself, what am I attached to? All the things we've been taught in these bodies as we progress are only taught because of those who taught them thought that they were what they were taught, what they were taught, what they were taught. But in reality, it is the opposite. Is that know that you are beyond all desire and to fully master the world of creating into reality or manifesting starts with a test of how well We can have a burning desire for something, yet not get lost in the fire of that desire. It's like walking the fine edge between living in this world, yet not of this world. Living in this world, yet not of this world. The secret to walking this edge is relaxing into this pure, untainted awareness that is looking through your eyes and listening through your ears. This is your only hope for freedom as it can become very easy to get consumed in the excitement, thrill, fear, and wild energy that surrounds your desires. We all want to feel truly alive, and when desire hits us, everything lights up. Yet, it is the real master who can feel the fire, honor the passionate heat, and not get cooked by the intensity of the juicy outcome or what you expect will manifest. The master chooses instead to be constantly warmed and nourished by the warm pulsating heart of the great source within each and every single one of us. Feel ecstatic that there is no end to life, that when you have reached on one peak, suddenly another peak starts giving you challenges, a higher one, a more arduous climb, a more dangerous reach. And when you will have reached the other peak, another peak, 
peaks upon peaks. It is an eternal Himalayas of life also. I think the most interesting dimension to shifting our consciousness is within the melting and merging of polar opposite experience. When we feel our deepest connection to the source, we're also allowing our worst limiting feelings and beliefs to arise. It's always in our darkest hour when the brightest light shines in. The change in perception hits us and we are no longer fixated on a polarizing perspective, meaning the instant we detach from gripping onto a harsh experience, we create space for gentle healing feelings to flow in. It is in this meeting of opposites, the melting of polarity, that we transcend all absolutes and discover what real freedom is about. Recognize the enlightened creating into reality, manifesting master inside you, and step into playing this role in your life. Find out what is stopping you from taking your next step into becoming truly free. What will it take to follow these principles and begin to live the laws of manifesting? Play with your beliefs. Notice which ones you are attached to and hold on throughout your day. Get, get to know yourself. Understand what it, what it is is causing all the suffering in your life. If perhaps you don't know what this is, just seek out what you are attached to. What limiting thoughts and beliefs and feelings do you have around these attachments? When you find what's causing the most pain in your life, you can liberate yourself from it. You will see that behind every experience of suffering, some form of attachment is found. Beware of attachments. Yet more importantly, be aware of where they came from. When you investigate, you may find there are many, many, many tiny little desires and attachments to those desires which are running your entire life. The good news is, is that the more you are aware of these attachments, the easier it is to step back from them and not buy into their story. Freedom from attachment is what gives us tons of extra energy and focus to continue consciously create the reality or manifest our desires. Once you're truly detached from all fiery desired outcomes, you will never become upset, irritable, and unhappy with the world. Now, it's very important to remember that being detached does not mean being disconnected or not caring about your future. This is a very fine line to walk and learning to dance along it is what makes you a master. After the day is done, it all comes down to how deep do you feel connected to this one universal source that is creating who you truly are. Living 24 hours a day from that all-loving space you will not need to be attached to any outcome to find happiness. You will be the source of happiness itself. Then, creating into reality your desires for money, love, cars, houses, relationships, etc., all occurs effortlessly on its own accord because you are at one with the source itself. You are born with a tremendous possibility of intelligence, 
You are born with a light within you. Listen to the still, small voice within that will guide you. Nobody else can guide you. Only you. You are utterly irreplaceable. Also. We learn each bit of this existence. We either choose to learn or we don't. And I believe that many of us would like to create into reality, manifest a life that is abundant with love, filled with peace, and overflowing with positive feelings. We can create a deeply nourishing, healing life for ourselves, and it is not that hard. The trick begins with the decision to master your mind. Just be willing to make space for a feeling of mastery of it in your life. You see, often the mind thinks like a beggar, and it cannot tap into the vast infinite realm of resources that are everywhere around it. It is only when the mind stops seeking, starts relaxing into itself, then it becomes rooted in the most empowered, authentic, and divine expression of who we truly are and can literally manifest whatever we want with effortless ease. Creating into reality is an art form and a metaphysical science, which means beyond physical, Meta, beyond physical. It's a science which deals with how naturally and effortlessly we can allow our desires to show up in the physical world. And basically, creating, moving energy into form, manifesting, just happens when you get crystal clear on what it is that you want and remove any limiting or negative thoughts about receiving it, hold the attention, hold the intention. It's now coming your way. And take massive inspired actions following your intuition. Now, when we talk about creating into reality or manifesting, it is not difficult to do. In fact, we do this, we, we create things into reality every day without realizing we're doing it. We desire a pizza and call the pizza guy and it is delivered hot and fresh to the door in 15 minutes. Yet, when it comes to bigger desires that feel beyond our realm of resources, we tend to fall into old limiting belief systems that stop us from believing that our dream is possible. One of the greatest secrets that you could probably mostly discover is to becoming a manifesting master in this life is learning how to live in a state of detachment from the mind. This means you realize that you are not these desires, you're not these desires or thoughts that pour through your mind. Yet you are the witness and consciousness behind it all. Detachment in this sense does not mean indifference, apathy, or lacking excitement for your desires. It's not a feeling of disconnection, isolation, or some strategy for creating a false disconnected state so that you can later achieve your desire and become momentarily happy. Having the intention to create into a reality, move energy into form, manifest a desire, and being, a, and being detached from the outcome is a very fine, thin line to walk. And learning to dance along, it makes you a master at it. Everything you want in life is created into reality, manifest effortlessly from this place of healthy detachment. It is a spiritual practice from feeling connected to the infinite source in all things. 
who you truly are. And from this deeply connected space, we don't need to become attached to any thought or thing. We don't. This type of detachment, it comes simply from quieting your mind chatter and connecting with your heart and soul. Your soul is already perfectly aligned with the entire universe, inherently abundant, extremely confident, and deeply at ease with all aspects of yourself. When you are in tune with your soul, you feel relaxed, centered, and can find stillness within your body. Your mind is then delighted here and lives in a state of gratitude for all that is and are okay with any result that may or may not occur. When we recognize that nothing has to go right for us to be happy, we recognize that nothing has to go right for us to be happy and that people don't have to behave for us to love them, our walk home can become surprisingly simple. Hugh Prother. The inability to be detached is the main hindrance to manifesting our desires. If we are super clear about what we want in this life and have no resistance to receiving it, our desire will be created into reality, moving energy into form, manifest within a very short time. Yet, if we feel disconnected from our soul, we need the outcome to find happiness and inner peace, and the body falls lower in vibration. We feel we need to work overtime to arrive at our destination and live from a place of stress inside. And when we are vibrating at a higher soul level, it's actually effortless to manifest any outcome or circumstance. It basically shows up in our lives because we are so connected and thus available to it. True detachment is a very advanced state to live from because you are allowing yourself to be absorbed in a deep trust with this life. You are totally surrendered to this connection with your highest power and infinite creative energy within. There is no need to try to achieve any outcome or fall into a state of lack or neediness about anything more, anymore. You know you already have access to an infinite resource of intelligent power which can attract everything you need. You are simply happy within yourself and your life exactly as it is. And you can feel it to the core of your bones. The more you can practice relaxing into your soul, the more you naturally open yourself to this meeting with this magical creating into reality, moving energy into form, manifesting world around you. Through the deepest release and sweetest surrender, you find your personal intimate connection with all intelligent, all powerful, deep, eternal, loving, creative source God that flows through us all. And the more you practice this, you establish a relationship with it, and eventually you find real peace with everything that occurs. There is no need to worry, hope or fear anything in the future. There is no need to worry, hope or fear anything in the future. You simply feel connected to the entire universe in all its glory and awesome power, and you can feel okay with every single thing that occurs. By spending time
time developing your intimate connection with the source that flows through every breath you take, every moment you make, you begin to feel it is everywhere you are. From this ever-present state, you just know you are always on the right path and can never, ever make a mistake. You stop believing in coincidences because you know that each moment is perfect, divinely synchronized, and contains the magical resources to manifest any desire you wish to materialize. Creating in reality, into reality, moving energy into form, manifesting then turns into this fun, creative, mysterious spiritual game to enjoy instead of some serious achievement affair where positive results are needed to make you happy. These are a few of the signs that you are on the path to becoming a manifesting master. Attachment, attachment leads to suffering. Expectations, attachments leads to suffering. Buddha. It's a good thing to remember that attachment is the number one cause of suffering in this world. Attachment is the number one cause of suffering in this world. Whenever, whenever we are suffering about anything on a mental, emotional, or physical level, it is certain that we are attached to some thought inside ourselves about something. Attachment is the most raw definition, means we cannot surrender to trust and let go. The most raw definition of attachment means that we cannot surrender to trust and let go. We are clinging out of fear and losing the outcome we desire. We can, we can be afraid, we cannot be afraid of losing anything in life all based on our want, wounding and karma from the past. When we discover how to trust in the state of detachment, we find the spiritual state of connection and our manifesting abilities ascend to an entirely new level. Attachment is a form of poverty consciousness which stems out of feeling disconnected to our spiritual source. Out of this desperation, we attach ourselves to certain thoughts, beliefs, people, and habits and hope that a certain positive source-like feeling will be created into reality will manifest and bring in all the happiness and satisfaction we were missing. This approach is obviously coming from ego, that fearful, needy place which deep down is neglecting and ignoring its innate connection to source. The ego is always desperate and always trying to make you feel secure because it's too busy to relax into the deep, loving source that is here now. The great cosmic joke, of course, is that the source is always right here, right now, and always available to tap into. And when we become free from the mind's attachment to anything, we start feeling the infinite love and energy within this source and know exactly how easy it is to manifest any life we desire. And when we are non-attached to the mind and are feeling connected to our souls, our core identity remains centered with the infinite source instead of our egos. We realize that we are the source of love, peace, and empowerment. It is not found outside of us, yet from within. From this enlightened space, our egos take a step down and simply feel grateful for life just as it is. Then the universe seems to hand over every wish, want, and desire that we have. It does this for mere joy 
of feeling our heart soften more and see the smile on our faces become bigger. And the only time surrender is not is in the presence of ego. Love does not resist itself because there is no thing outside it to resist. Just make peace with the mind in every moment and you will experience total bliss. Angela Walker. Behind every fear, anxiety, and pain, an attachment is hiding. If you are unsure where it is or what exactly you are attached to in life, just check your body. A feeling of tension, clenching, or anxiety always appears. Talk with that part of your body. Listen to it closely for a few minutes, and eventually you will notice a message inside the tense, tight, or contracted sensation. The more you understand the reason for these attachments, the easier it is to step back from them and not buy into their story. Freedom from attachment is a healing process. And when you are truly free, it means you'll have tons of extra time, love, energy, to consciously create into reality, manifest the life that your heart really desires. The process to shift out of any attachment is this. First, to identify where it is located in the body. Breathe into the tight sensation. Feel the pain. Listen to its story. Let go of its story and relax into the source beyond it all. And repeat this until the tension or the story are gone. It helps to remember that happiness does not depend on anything in the outer world. Yet your level of surrender to your heart's connected to the source within. The more often you practice this surrender, the less chance you will ever get attached to anything ever again. Every moment is an opportunity to release those hidden attachments, stopping each and every one of us from creating into reality, moving energy into form, manifesting our dreams, yet sometimes they are tricky to find. If you are accustomed to living with stress and tension each day, and your mind is too loud to hear what its message is for you, simply look inside yourself and ask, who is attached? Where do I feel I'm lacking in my life that is causing me to be overly hooked into this particular thought, belief, assumption, or outcome? What is that missing part of me that desperately needs X, Y, Z to manifest in order for me to be happy. It is vital to remember that it is always your mind that is attached and not you. You are not your mind. You are the soul who is eternal, infinite, unbounded, and cannot be attached to anything. And the more clear that all of us can become about what we are attached to in life and why, the more enlightened we will definitely become. And when we can identify the lacking feelings we are holding on to, we stop blaming the world for how we feel and reclaim our power again. Seeing what actually is creating our need for attachment is the key to unleashing our freedom. The limiting feelings we regurgitate about ourselves are the secret gateways to forming new paradigms of being and seeing reality. And we all have the power within ourselves to release our blocks right now and thus attract any desired outcome in this life that we choose. We no longer need to engage in states of unnecessary suffering ever again. Breathe into your body so deeply that there is no more room for the mind to 
enter. Breathe into your body so there is no more room for the mind to enter. Be free from the mind. Let yourself feel into the still, calm, ever-loving source that is beneath all needy feelings. When you, whenever you feel stuck, just ask the magic question. What am I attached to? It's that simple. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies from head to toe, inside and out. Most of the time we experience stress, anxiety, and fear. Our bodies are tense, tight, not resilient. And ask yourself what you're attached to. Identify the areas of the body. Are your shoulders compressed and tense? Are they bunched up? Do you feel stress in your lower back? Do you feel pain anywhere? These are all signs that you are attached to something. Release it. Release the attachments. Just let them go. It is not that difficult. Have the trust within your soul and your God self and your pure consciousness that it is fine to let go. As you do this, the body will respond and relax. And as the body is relaxing, we move into the now. And the now is all we have. We don't have the past. The past we've already experienced. That's why it's the past. We don't have the future. The future hasn't been created. That's why it's called the future. We're only in the now. The space between heartbeats, moment to moment. Everything that you're doing in this very moment is the now. And as it shifts into the past, you go into more of the present, the now, moment to moment. And in the now, we still the mind. You leave the mind in the now. You still the ego, the subconsciousness. You go into peace with your soul and joy. Now, some of us will go into the past. We reminisce, but unfortunately, some of us are so seduced because we skip over the now, we either in the future or in the past. Well, we, most of us are never in the now because of the attachments. But some of us will go into the past, we will drag that past into a future that doesn't exist, we will create that future from that past, and we will live that past in that future going over things that we've already experienced over and over again, reliving, 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 stymies our growth in an upward balanced direction, alleviating tensions and stress and fear through letting go of attachments, moving into pure bliss. So how do we stay in the now? How do we? We breath into the now. We have our breath. And our breath is divine positive energy. And the breath holds the kingdom of God, sustains the body. So whenever you feel that you're moving out of the now, which means you're wandering into a future that doesn't exist, or you're dabbling in the past, all you need to do is focus on your breath, your divine positive energy. And when you do this, you will immediately move into the now. And as in the now, in our divine positive energy, our breath, and as we've relaxed the body, we will bring our divine positive energy, our breath, up through the center of our bodies to the tops of our heads. We will join our God force energy, our chi, our prana, our ki. The both of them will flow effortlessly through seven energy wheels, energy vortexes, chakras, wheels of light. There are seven running through the center of our bodies in basic. Each of them has a, a flower, and each flower is different. 
and each geometrical shape in the center of the flower is different. So we start with the red wheel of light, the root chakra, the muladhara. This is career, money, mindset, and sense of belonging. These are your gateways and guidance between the spiritual and the physical, and from the physical to the spiritual, back and forth. The root chakra represents our foundation and feeling of being in the now. It's the base of the spine and tailbone area. It's survival issues such as financial independence, money, and food. Our physical association, spine, rectum, legs, arms, and circulatory system. I suggest you view this deeply in your heart, mind's motion picture as we go through this meditation. And we move into the orange wheel of light, the sacral chakra. This is the Vadasthana, it's sexuality and pleasure. It's our connection and ability to accept others and new experiences. Our location of it is lower abdomen, about two inches below the navel, two inches in. Emotional issues, sense of abundance, well-being, pleasure, sexuality, physical association, reproductive organs, kidneys, bowels, and immune system. Then we move to the golden yellow wheel of light, the solar plexus chakra, the manapura, personal power, and ability to channel. Our ability to be confident in inflow of our lives. It is letting go of all attachments. It's in our upper abdomen and the lower stomach area. Our emotional issues are self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem. Our physical association is the central nervous system, pancreas, liver, digestive tract, and skin. Then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, the heart chakra, the anahata. This is our love, relationships, and self-acceptance. It's our ability to love. It's a location in the center of our chest, just above our hearts. Emotional issues, our love, joy, and inner peace. Our physical association, heart, thymus, lower lungs, circulatory system, immune system. Then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the Vashuddha. Self-expression It is our ability to communicate. It's in our throat, emotional issues, communication, self-expression of feelings, the truth, physical association, thyroid, respiratory system, teeth, and vocal cords. Then we move to the third eye chakra, the ajna, intuition, sense of purpose, and direction in life. It is our ability to focus on and see the big picture. Many of us don't see the trees through the forest, nor the forest through the trees. Some of us don't see it at all. Location is the forehead between the eyes, also called the brow chakra. Our emotional issues are intuition, imagination, wisdom, ability to think and make decisions. Our physical association is pituitary gland, eyes, sinuses, and then we move to the crown chakra, the sasra, connection to the divine. This is the highest chakra, and it represents our ability to be fully connected spiritually. It's at the very top of our heads. Emotional issues are inner and outer beauty. It is how we view ourselves and know ourselves. It is our connection to spirituality and pure bliss, to the God, to pure consciousness. The physical association is pineal gland, brain, and nervous system. And your heart, mind, motion picture as you watch, you experience this flow of divine positive energy and God force light love energy all at the top of our heads, all through the energy vortexes, the chakras. And in just a brief moment, I am light, I am love, I am, we condense and compress this into pure liquid energy. And we release it over our pineal glands. 
Our pineal glands are very important to us while we're in these bodies. They are the gateway to all the particles of existence, to God, to pure consciousness, and beyond. So in your heart, my motion picture, see it however you want. Identify the pineal however you see it. I see it as a rosebud, a green ball. And as I release this pure liquid energy over it, it explodes into a beautiful, fully blossomed rose with multicolored petals and a beautiful, continual fragrance. And it sends out soft waves of pure, deep, eternal bliss, and love, and joy, and expanse in all the gateways that have been locked away. All of the doors are vaporized, all of the locks are no more, and we are in everything, in everything, and nothing, and nothing, all at the same time. We are consciously aware that we are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we are one. We are merged. The heart, mind, the body, the soul, the spirit, the higher self, the God, the pure consciousness, all one. We are heaven on this earth, and every single step we take, it becomes paradise. We have others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. We have the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sananda, Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua. Many, many, many more. And only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us this now, this meditation form the circle of light. And both of them are. Archangels are a civilization that vibrate at a different frequency than we do. We don't see them like we see each other, but boy, do we interact with them. We meet them all the time. We meet them in this life. Doesn't necessarily mean that you know it at the, at the beginning, but afterwards you will know it in some way, shape, form, or another. And it is always a blissful feeling. Thousands of them can surround any one of us at any one time because of their vibrational frequency. They can house a large number in a small area. who have ascended masters, these are those who have mastered ascension out of body and hold pure consciousness, God form. We are those who have entered physical form to master it and to create our experiences in it, in the life, so that we can perfect our creation. And we're all part of each other. The Ascended Masters are us, we are the Ascended Masters. The Archangels, the Cherubim, the Seraph, and the Archetypes are us, and we are them. And then we're compelled to call out to all of the other facets, facets and aspects of ourselves, in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. So we reach out to all of the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever and forever and only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation of forming the circle of light they come in the googleplexes one googleplex fills this entire universe they come in the trillions from every direction and they are with us now. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, and beneath earth. Many, many, many civilizations and species 
only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now in this meditation to form the circle of light. And they come in the billions, and they are with us now. We call upon all the galactics, all the off-worlders, all of the celestials, only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form of this circle of light. Our frequencies are high. We are assembled at high frequency. We transcend the planet and the civilization into a higher vibrance and frequency, which uplifts the collective consciousness, leaving the third density and bringing us into fifth density. This is what we are witnessing now. Now, we're familiar with only a handful of these civilizations. Somewhat familiar. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every day. Trillions travel throughout the universes every single day. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with includes all of their levels and species. The good, the not so good, and the bad. Of course, the bad cannot participate in high frequency meditation because their frequencies are too low. And the not so good will try to participate. We have the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Andromedans, the Arcturians, the Zeta Reticuli, and the Feline, the Nord, the Gray, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion, many, many, many more. And only those that are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, to form the circle of life. They've been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they come into billions, and they are with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Only those that are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation and forming this circle of light. And they come into billions and they're with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now in this meditation in the form of the circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation in this forming of the circle of light. Well, we're only familiar with a handful of them, just a bare fraction. They come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, of which many we've never, ever seen before. And the ones that we are familiar with, somewhat, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls. The elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether. The mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And they come in the trillions, and they are with us now. We are all assembled for the liberation eternally of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of the circle of light. Lifting the entire civilization and the planet into a higher frequency of deep eternal
internal love and gratitude, a five density and beyond. This is something that cannot be stopped. It is in full order. And we're all one. And we're all God. And we're all pure consciousness. We're all love deep eternal love, arm in arm, hand in hand, all of our gods is one, we are in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence and abundance. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We form a massive circle of light at the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, in this now, in this meditation. This is our core essence, our core existence, that of which we truly are, Pure consciousness, the God. This is the vibrational frequency of deep, pure, eternal love, light energy. It is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of space. And it would take a thousand billion suns in this solar system to come even close to its radiance. And this massive circle of light floods all of our brothers and sisters inside and out, head to toe. Saturates, floods, and bathes all life, the highest supreme value in the universe, on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, in this meditation, in this circle of light. Perpetually. And we begin to levitate above this planet. And as we levitate above the planet, we're met with a gossamer field, an ocean as far as you can see and feel of highly vibrant colored reflective light. This is all of us gathered in this meditation on and off world. All aspects of all of us blinking and flashing and these little tiny mirrors everywhere, flooding everything and everything, nothing and nothing. And we're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we are imbued from head to toe, inside and out, eternally, with a God force, light, love, energy that is immeasurable. It protects us 24 seven. It cannot be violated from any external power or source. It cannot be affected and it cannot be diminished. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide, whether consciously or unconsciously, to lower your vibrational frequency low enough through hate, anger, fear, deception, manipulation, greed, you will lower your vibrational frequency low enough, you will create a breach in your white fire armor. Enough so you will allow all the lower dark matter frequencies, survival matter frequencies to come flooding.
flooding in. If you do decide to do this, you are then met with the purple transmuting flame. This is a column that reminds each and every one of us that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all the lower dark, lower level dark matter frequencies, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. We are then met with the violet ray. This is a column that reminds each and every single one of us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can balance, harmonize, cleanse, and purify. We can seal the breach in our white fire armor, balance our vibrational frequency with our God force, love, light, energy, and perfect harmony. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is the column that reminds all of us that we are the sunsets. We are the sunrises. We are the sky. We are the rain. We are the rainbow. We are the sunlight. We are the sun. We are the stars. We are the animals. We are the soils. We are the waterways, the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the brooks, the creeks. We are everything and everything, nothing and nothing, all at the same time. We continue to levitate above this planet. Some of us step outside of our physical forms float effortlessly above them. We come into perfect view of this massive crystal light tower. It's at center circle. It is absolutely right with our meditative sphere. It is larger than the solar system. We created it. We look in the center of the shaft. We see this oblong circle here in the center is this beautiful vibrant golden white yellow light sending out warm mists of deep pure eternal love penetrating us flowing with us in us around us above us below us and all of the bands of beautiful shimmering multitude of colored lights sending out their waves of mist saturating, flooding, and bathing each and every one of us in tranquility, in benevolence, in abundance, in prosperity, in riches, in wonderful health, wealth, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, all these waves flooding us eternally. And then at the top, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, flooding every one of us in deep, pure, eternal love and joy and gratitude. Endless, flooding all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. In full liberation of this planet of Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, this circle of life. We are the drops of this golden ocean. We hold the essence of this golden ocean. The ocean is the drops, and the drops are the ocean. There is no separation. We see our meditative sphere. We created this meditative sphere almost three years ago. It is right in front of us. It is massive. It holds over a thousand of our meditations in perpetual motion. And we add to it all of us collectively every single day. Flooding and saturating all of us with the deepest of purest eternal love, gratitude, joy, bliss, tranquility, benevolence, abundance. How can the 
vibrational frequencies of this planet not accelerate higher and higher. They cannot not. They are. This is why the sphere continues to intensify and continues to expand. And this is why it can be seen, heard, and felt and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. Feel through your motion picture of your heart minds. All of us have been given the gifts of the gods. We create our reality according to our beliefs. Ours is the creative energy that makes this world. There are no limitations to the self except those you choose to believe in. I'll join you in the meditation, return to close us out. 